Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road of the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. Like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2019. We're on to episode number 42 now here in the series, and we are ready to begin play in Conference B. Holy cow, we've almost made it to the pinnacle one tier away from the top and we've still never even had that crazy super deep run in the NCAA tournament yet somehow we keep navigating the leagues and just getting a little bit better and better and better roster wise this is one of the best place one of the best places we've ever been in we've got a really strong roster right now very much high end i've got four players that are four stars or better now we have a couple three and a half star guys three star guys two and a half star guys so there is a lot of quality in the in the team uh, one of the downsides is that i have three centers at four stars so it is not exactly balanced right now but still it's quality that is unmatched previously I've never had more than two players or three players at that level or above, so we are very much getting there. Now the unfortunate thing though is you look down the list is majority of these players, there's a lot of seniors, a lot of seniors out there. So we are going to be taking a big step backwards. Right, I'm looking at that directly. There are nine seniors in all on roster two of them are walk-ons but that is seven scholarship players that will be graduating this year now i only have one junior so only one senior next year so i'm not feeling that it is extremely urgent for me to go out and try to fill all seven scholarships but I certainly need some players. And some players, well, I'm a bit shy of what I would really consider to be adequate. I think four is about the minimum. Five would be perfect. Save two scholarships for the following year. That's what we have right now. Al Morrison, number 28 player in the nation. Fantastic, excited. Rico Cruz, number 65 player. So two good quality players set to come in but i'm still nervous about one thing uh, and let's go ahead and kind of push forward because we are just days away from sat scores coming out and we'll look in a moment at morrison and cruz but there is a concern there that we could be down a player as soon as those sat scores arrive so as we enter the new year it's going to take a moment to save that uh, things could be changing on that front and being more dire than they are right now two quality players that that's good that's something we definitely need more than that we need at least another one to two quality players coming in if we're going to have any hope of hanging on to whatever conference we're in uh, next season. Let's, let's go ahead and get some more scouting reports out of the way and look for a much closer matchup with uh, Texas Tech, as well as North Carolina, uh, North Carolina State, that is. But as we are ready to enter that conference B setup, it, it is ridiculously... Uh, tight compact within conference b there is so much quality and by the way this is literally what i am down to now uh, we have so little uh, left for which to to pull players so a lot of concerns out there and morrison and cruz are the only a players left on my list a lot of good players have already signed on. We're way past that point, so that that list is short. Uh, Joiner here, 
looks like he'd be a pretty good addition. So here's what I'm talking about, by the way. Uh, Morrison, 2.8 GPA. That's, yeah, that that's pretty close. Uh, Cruz, probably not going to make it. 2.4. 2.4. Ooh, I think that's lower than what it was. Uh, the only reason why we even went after Cruz at all was he was not on my initial list. He was a player that I found later, and he was a player that I already had an offer into before I even had that full scouting, just because he was far better than was out there, and actually he was not even 65. He was ranked a bit higher than that early, uh, and he liked us immediately, so it was like, okay, sure. Yeah, let's, let's do this. And, and then that was that. <laughs> So we're not even on his top 10. We are moving up the list here a little bit for Williams, who's right on the edge of the top 100, but only a C overall. There's one named Barnes, who 274, but was 106, is a B overall, is a Decent player, cares about location. JC sophomore, I actually kind of like that because I don't want to end up with the same scenario down the road where we suddenly have seven guys graduating all at once. That's kind of how we got here in the first place between when red shirts happened and didn't happen and JC class joining freshman class at the point where they became juniors and the JC guys became juniors. It, it, just perfect storm of uh, ouch we are in trouble next season yeah maybe I need to look into Barnes here I do have one more scholarship to offer and he's top three already he cares about location and Oklahoma is not close to Portland Oregon though I do know some people around here from Oklahoma and I certainly don't know people from every state around here I mean I've I've moved around, I was in the army, I've met people from every state, but here, where I live, not uh, totally diverse, not every part of the country is represented here. Facilities though, not too bad. Uh, body handling and rebounding is poor, that's not good. He's not really good at anything other than a good inside shot. I hold off on that. I really think I need to go kind of back in and start looking at recruits again that are left. Because I'm not necessarily finding anything in here that I necessarily like. Maybe next week. Uh, especially once we have a better idea SAT wise who qualifies who doesn't I think that's uh, that's gonna have an impact so there we go Arizona State let's get into that game uh, we are definitely not gonna finish this season in this episode there's too much going on recruiting wise and with this conference B action RPI right now sitting at 71 but we had a relatively light on conference schedule that we managed to go 10 and 2 on not a perfect record by any means but still a good record and Arizona State looks to be the weakest or one of the weakest here in conference this season as they're having a bit of a down year and we are heavily favored for this one uh, just like in real life where Arizona State comes to Mac court and struggles you know Pac-12 Pac-12 but this is not Oregon. This is the Olympic decathlon rings. I just, one of these days, one of these days, maybe I'll design my own floor. Uh, but that is quite the process. All right, so early in this one, we've got a three point lead. Five minutes already played, low scoring affair early on as neither team really off to much of a start here. Uh, 
Arizona just got their third field goal. We still have only made two ourselves, but we've had six trips to the free throw line, making all three. Both teams attempting multiple three-pointers and not making those as well. Uh, strange game. A few blocks already, lots of turnovers already. Arizona State has five turnovers to open this game. We have three turnovers to open this game, and we were sitting on two for whatever for the longest time. Finally now, make two in a row, go 4-14 four from, uh, from the field now as Arizona State. They're not getting anywhere near the attempts we are. Uh, they five fewer attempts, uh, but they're shooting at about 50%. Rebounds are level. Uh, the turnovers, again, is the area where we're starting to pull ahead. If we were only shooting a little bit better, uh, we'd be ahead by a pretty comfortable margin in this one, but it's a one-point game as of right now. Let's go ahead and use a 30 here, see if we can't start getting something rolling. Uh, we have made our last couple field goals here. Small lead, four points, but Arizona State keeping it close. Again, it's the shooting that's the difference right now. We're bringing their field goal percentage back down, and ours is slowly coming up here. Uh, really, the only thing that's kept Arizona in the state, so uh, Arizona State in the game so far, besides the fact that they have a better field goal percentage, is primarily that it's from range. Four of six beyond the arc, while we are one of seven right now here in the first half. Uh, we're about to hit halftime. It's a one-point deficit, actually, at the moment, as Arizona State has kept up their momentum. And our lack of momentum continued all the way to halftime, and we trail by three. Now, the good news is we're just not shooting well. All we have to do is sink a couple shots, and we will blow them out in the second half, or so it would seem. I mean, we are ahead in so many ways in this game, but... We'll see. We, we, we start the second half with a turnover, and Arizona State starts with another three-pointer. We're one of 11 beyond the arc now ourselves. So just pitiful shooting day. And one for 11 beyond the arc is rarely something you can put on the defense. I'm not saying that it's not. Defense can certainly affect the three-point shot. But more often than not, right, just playing percentages here more often than not three-pointers are the shots that you can get a little bit of a decent look at by the way we've come from behind take a small lead here i'm definitely starting to shoot a little bit better here maybe still one for 12 now yeah there one for 13 uh, you tend to get a, at least a little bit of a look on on threes so if you're not making them that's just because you're not making them and uh, in Arizona State, 9 for 16. It is absolutely keeping them in this game. In fact, half of the field goals they have made in this game have been threes. They only have nine two-point field goals in this game. And they've had 24 attempts from two. So Arizona State definitely hanging around because of that. We finally make our second with three more attempts, so it's 2 of 14 now, just 14% beyond the arc. Overall, 44%, so that's that's where we've picked it up. We're not making the threes yet, but we're making those twos a lot more consistently. Rebounding, we are now running away from Arizona State in this one, plus 13 turnovers, uh, plus three. That hasn't changed much, but uh, we have opened up this game by consistently making our twos. They continue to make threes to keep it somewhat close. And in fact, just like that, the score was back down to four. In a hurry. A couple more threes for Arizona State. 11 for 20 now. And we're still sitting on just two for 16. Again, this should be a blowout, but it's not. We're going to use a timeout here. 38 seconds, 10 point lead. That should do it. 83 76. That was the ugliest win we've had in a while. Uh, Fleming had 10. Kirkland, 16 and 8. Davies, 15 and 8. Cougar, 3 and 7. Pretty quiet day for him, but he did have three blocks and only one turnover. Uh, Lockwood, 14 points, five rebounds. Russell, 11 points, seven assists for him. Five turnovers there, so our guards did struggle a bit and turned the ball over way too much. 
really quiet day for Nick Few. Alright, let's finish this week off. Uh, next up is Stanford. It is a road game, but we were pretty heavily favored, at least on paper, for this game against Stanford. We'll see if it ends up that way. Road games are never an easy thing, especially when you're playing in conference, and especially when you're playing in conference B. Second most prestigious conference in the land is going to be a challenge every game. And that was the thing even there with Arizona State. The team that we probably should have beaten most comfortably of all in the entire conference was a struggle because they were making their threes and we weren't. You know, that three ball is so important now. It's more important now than it has ever been. And that three-point line's been around for over 40 years now. But we finally have a generation that's figured out how to utilize it effectively and how to make it mathematically viable. How to make a percentage of threes made more valuable on the number of possessions that it takes in comparison to a two for that one more point. Ooh. Two games into the season, conference season that is. We've got two wins. We do we did get that win against Stanford. Eighty eight eighty was the final. And that was on the road. We did it with a twelve point halftime lead. Never trailed in the game. Twenty fast break points. Now yeah, we led by twenty. Uh, but they did close it down a bit in the end. Lockwood struggled 5 for 16, but every starter in double digits. Cougar fouled out. 50% from the field, just dead even. 32 for 64. And that's despite Lockwood's really poor performance. Again, really, really struggling beyond the arc. 1 for 12, and yet somehow we won. So we are not shooting the three ball well, at least not this week. Okay, Georgia Tech, Indiana coming up. Georgia Tech 14 and one, and we've got 50-50. That's at home, so they're actually the favorite team, but the home court advantage seems to just about break even. And there's Indiana one of the other teams that has struggled so far this season. Quick look at the standings. Here's who's in the conference, and it's way too early days to really see much of anything, uh, but we do have some teams 2-0. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams ranked. That's what happens when you get into those top two conferences. Uh, we dominate the standings. I mean, there's probably 15 of 25 are from the first two conferences. And there was, what, five or six from Conference C? Meaning there's only about four or five slots left for the entire rest of the nation outside of the first three conferences. That's that's how tight things are. Uh, Iowa right now, 12th in RPI. North Carolina State is 17th in RPI. Notre Dame, 27. Georgia Tech, 18. We just hit 42. And that came up 30 spots with those first two games. 
So getting into some tougher competition will really start to open that up. Uh, Notre Dame, perfect 12-0 at home. <laughs> They've only played three road games, but they're only 1-2. and two. Uh, The road record is going to start to be a bigger indicator than anything else in Iowa. You can see why their RPI is so high. They're 3-4 and four on the road. Texas Tech, 10-1 and one at home, but 0-2 on the road. Uh, looking at those overall standings, a lot of quality, a lot of quality. We're looking at Clemson, Virginia struggling this year. Wow, okay. Virginia must have graduated a bunch of guys. Uh, Arizona State struggling. Indiana struggling somewhat. That's four teams that are struggling. Washington a little bit. Stanford a little bit. And then Mississippi will miss. Uh, so th there's kind of your expected bottom half of the conference. But the top half of the conference, holy cow, it's going to be a battle. Uh, there will definitely be some attrition towards the end of the season. A lot of these really outstanding records, high percentages, 70% or better on win percentages, are, are going to fade. Going to fade quite a bit. Can we keep it up? Can we stay near the top of the league? Well, we'll find out. But back to recruiting the players. No SAT score yet. It used to tell you when you would get that SAT score. But there's nothing now. And that's going to dictate everything that goes on from here. So I'm kind of just waiting it out. Uh, I should be any day. Any day now, I should have the SAT scores. And I'm almost certain that Cruz is not going to make it. And then I still have worries that even Morrison may not make it. Texas Tech, next game. Not going to watch it. Recruiting will be our focus here in the short term. So we'll just box score some things for now. There's our first conference loss. Texas Tech beat us by 27. Ouch, that's a road game. And they were favored, so that was that was kind of the first time that we were shown as less than a favorite. And this will be our third road game in four to open the conference. So if we happen to win this one and go three and one, that that's actually going to put us in a really, really good spot. Still no SAT scores, apparently. I'm literally, literally biting at the bit, you know, any moment now, any moment. I think Rico Cruz is going to drop off that list, right? That's how that one's going to go, or at least there's going to be... Well, there's not even going to be an email message, unless it's one of those, we're sorry to say, but this guy, and or this guy is out. Now if they both qualify it's not going to say anything. So I'm not going to know when that pops up without checking frequently. Let's go ahead and get through this game first. Now according to scouting reports Texas Tech was a harder game than this North Carolina one even though Texas Tech was not ranked. North Carolina was. But we dropped 2-2 two and two in conference. Really close, close game here. We lose by two points. We led a little bit at the half. It's a good performance. And that's a tough loss. And it looks like it was on the bench. The bench is uh, where this loss came. Not helped by Cougar fouling out yet again, and Kirkland having some foul trouble issues where he only played 17 minutes and was 1 for 5 from the field. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit rough. Thomas Fleming, decent performance off the bench with 10 rebounds, 8 points. 
He had 22 minutes played. That was three for four shooting. So two and two out of three road games. That's I, I suppose that's not too bad. <laughs> That's still adequate. I mean, if you can do that, win one out of every three on the road, and then win everything at home, we're we're looking at maybe eleven and five, maybe ten and six, give or take. Let's say eleven and five. I'd be happy with eleven and five in conference this season. Uh, but let's also say we're probably not going to go perfect from home. Let's say we go seven and one, and then yeah, you know, three and five on the road or two and six on the road. Two and six would be more likely. So it's more like nine and seven. That's still, that's that's make the tournament quality. That's a good place to be. I don't think we're yet that team that's going to be just winning Conference B and moving on up even with the quality I have right now. We need our prestige to go up. We need to, we need to make the tournament and we need to make a deep run. That's what's going to build the prestige because doing well in conference isn't having a major impact on the prestige. It's still it's still down there quite a bit. It's still down there around conference F where we kind of started this playthrough. So here we go. Let's get back to this. We are going to take a quick glance and see if we have SAT scores. No, we do not. Still no SAT scores. And then, like I said, that's that's what I'm waiting for now. Even though I could start looking at a lot of different players, maybe start scouting some other players outside of this list, and maybe that's what I need to do. But I need to have access to those SAT scores really before I can make clear judgment calls on who's going to qualify and who doesn't. At this point, I'm going to have to run the risk of taking guys with lower grades. In the years past, it was pretty easy to target guys with high GPAs that were also quality players, so I didn't have to worry about them. But this year, I've got five scholarships left to go, and I'm probably going to have more than that. Uh, I'm assuming Rico Cruz will not qualify. I have new mail. I have new mail. He's still on the list. Washington, 52% favorites. Iowa, uh, Iowa's heavily favored. I, I can kind of see why they, they're looking extremely good this season. Iowa's definitely one of the conference favorites. But I'm liking that I am probably in the upper echelon of the conference and so I'm, I'm not fighting relegation <laughs> this season <laughs> this season next season uh, yeah probably going to be a different story hi yeah yeah sat sat do 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 do, do. Oh, when is it gonna be oh, let me know what it's gonna be Georgia Tech, number 11 in the nation, but we are at home. Get her done. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Winnable game because we're at home, and we got it. We got it. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Please, may I have another? 8148. 36 point largest lead of the game. We won by 33. Wow, that was dominant. That was a big game. That was a big game. Kirkland, 12 rebounds. Nobody fouled out. That helps. Russell, 11 assists, 10 points. So he got a double-double. Probably his first. 
two guys in double digits on rebounds, but neither one of them managing to uh, bring in a double-double overall. The way we won this game, though, was defense. 27% from the field, 13% beyond the arc. 35 rebounds to our 43. There's 16 turnovers to our 10. So, defense, defense, kicked their butts. Now, the, the one good piece of news regarding our recruiting is we still have plenty of budget available, so we're not out of cash or anything like that. It scared me for a second as both names disappeared. Uh, Kirkland's got bronchitis. He'll be better in one day. Davies getting 16 points a game. Russell, 7.5 assists a game. Davies, 7 rebounds per game. We are number one at assists in the nation. Top five in points and steals. And our offense is all over the place in terms of top stats nationally. Defense also turnovers, top ten in steals and assists there as well. So we are uh, looking really good and yet still not so good. Now, Indiana is a winnable game, but it is on the road see if we can get another road win. Remember, we're looking for three, and I have new mail right in the middle of this one, so I'm a little worried about what that might be. I have a feeling it could be the Rico Cruz news. January 19th, I think that this is that time where we should be having mail. Well, his name's still there. Incident? Post-game incident report. Coach, I think you need to know about something that happened. After you left the locker room, a couple of the guys came to me and said that Thomas Fleming was mouthing off about Shane Kirkland. He was saying the usual stuff about, you know, like him, and we would be so much better if you played him instead. I'll leave it up to you to handle this one, but be careful. This probably won't be the only instance like this. It is hard when you have three guys that are four-star players at the same position. Still no SAT scores. 19,000 is that budget that I'm talking about. Okay, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm gonna, no, you know what, let's, let's not do that. Um, how we go position by position. Point guard, we're, we're gonna almost go hands off. I'm hoping, hoping Morrison and his 2.8 GPA is enough. I'm gonna hide the sign slash non-qualified. I'm gonna hide the committed players. And we're going to search nationally. i got to remember, too, that I've got a couple international guys. Uh, actually, is Rico Cruz on that list? Oh, I forgot about that. That is something. Uh, Rico Cruz may end up qualified. If I just remember the detail, it's been a while since I recorded the previous episode. Uh, here's the highest ranked player left and maybe I'll take these first three guys and go da -da, da -da, and da -da. Well, top 152 I want to say that Cruz is an international prospect There's Walker. Walker does like us. But he has dropped a bit in rank, but not a crazy amount.
drives me nuts how it segregates your international prospects from your national prospects. And I understand that that should be selectable. But there's no option to include them all together. And, and that is a big no-no in my eyes. Only at 122, so it looks like power forward still a bit more undecided compared to other positions. So we go a little deeper down that list. Took this guy off the list because his GPA was clearly too low at a 2.4. There we go. Alright, now let's go back to our list. Now, there's Cruz. Cruz is from Pennsylvania, so no. That's not the case. There is somebody that I'm looking at, though. That is an international guy. There's three of them. And Molinari. There we go. So Elijah Molinari, international. He's got a 2.5 GPA, which is not great. But we are number one on his list. So we could have our small forward here. Canadian player, 55. That's... There was something to do with that. <laughs> now we've got two other guys we're looking at as well. Uh, let me go back to the national list. Uh, let's start uh, taking a look down here. Instead of making calls this week, what I want to do, let's go watch list. And let's get a scouting report on all of these guys. Because that should include GPA. All right. Next up is Washington. It's a home game. They they're eleven and six. It's it's not a bad team. It is not a bad team, so even my home games, there's nothing's a given. Nothing's an automatic. And at just three and three, we're, we're still looking pretty. Hmm, well, wide open, I suppose, on how things could go. Four of those six games have been on the road means down the stretch, right, out of the last 10, we'll have 6 of 10 at home. So we'll, we'll get that game back at some point with additional home games down the stretch. So I'm happy about that part. But that doesn't mean we're going to win those either. Uh, conference leaders... Uh, Russell second in assists, Lockwood third in steals, Mail probably, yeah, Sky Reports, Virginia, their record might not say it, but they do still have quality, just two and four in conference though, Memphis, we're at home for that one, but Memphis also looking extremely good so far this season. And you can see why here in the scatter report, as uh, we are not favored in that one. They are ranked number 21 at 13-4, and four, but 
they definitely looked like one of the more dominant teams. They had one of the highest RPIs. Mines actually continue to go up at 37 as our quality of opponent has risen a lot. And even though we're 500 in conference, it's still building our profile because we've had three quality wins. Eighty-seven sixty-eight over Washington. Huskies going down. Huge halftime lead that uh, closed down a little bit in the second half, but not much. Never trailed. Led the entire game. Lockwood had twenty-five on nine of fifteen shooting, six for six beyond the arc. Russell five for fourteen beyond the arc. We put up a lot of threes and scored a decent amount of them. Remember, the GPA that we're looking at doesn't actually mean anything in college. That's a high school GPA. And the entrance is not based on that GPA. But it is based on their SAT score. And the GPA, well, it's an indicator. It's an indicator of what that SAT score might be. Can a person with a low GPA get a high SAT score? Absolutely. But does it happen very often? No, it's a bit of an anomaly. And, and there's that tricky part. <sighs> okay, January 26th. I cannot believe we have not seen those SAT scores yet. But here we go. Iowa, this is that home game that very well could be a loss. We've been perfect at home so far. But that could very well end today in what's arguably the toughest team in the conference, and they do beat us on our home court. Relatively tight contest. We lose by 7, 66-59. Defensively, it looks like we played pretty well. We held them to 41%. 36 rebounds. We forced... We were minus 2 on rebounds. We were plus 2 on turnovers. Lockwood scored 20 points, but we were only 38% from the field, and again, not shooting well beyond the arc. Four for 19 for the game. And free throws, we didn't do ourselves uh, any favors in that area as well. Six, uh, nine for 15, 60% in that department. So definitely a defensive struggle, and definitely not our best game. And ironically, the minutes went pretty much exactly as they are supposed to for a change. Everybody played 31, and everybody on the bench played 8. We went with our two deep, five guys. Interesting lineup. I haven't seen that really work out terribly well this season. But there, that time, it did. Another post-game incident. Oof. And it's Fleming... Off and off about Kirkland again. Could be an issue. Fleming's done well off the bench, and, and I get it. That's that's a thing. He wants to play. Every loss, he's going to go out there and complain. And here's Virginia, our nemesis of the last couple of years that have gone up with us, the toughest team around us. And there are just 9 to 10 this season. Uh, not saying that we're... Doing a whole lot better, though, and we are going to be on the road. What have you got for me? Okay, we do have some reports out now. We still have no SATs, though. 
continue down the list. I'm not even going to bother checking yet. Those GP. Oh, hold on. I've got GPAs on everybody because they're on the list. Uh, let's go ahead and update that part. So let's go call this. This is the far easier way to get through this. Alright, 3.5. I like that. 2.1. Definitely not qualifying. One point nine. Another one point nine. Two point six, pretty iffy. Two point two is definitely not happening. <laughs> one point eight. I might even be the first one. We're number one on his list. I might be the first one who even took a look at it because I didn't know what his GPA was. 2.5 is definitely too low. And it's a point guard. Barnes, we're number one on his list now. But he's at the bottom of our list. That does shorten it down a little bit. Just a couple guys after this. So that extends our recruiting list a lot. I can't believe we've already gotten to the end of January and it's still giving me nothing. So at 4 or 4, we're right in the middle. But look at that. We are absolutely beating each other up. Number one in the conference is 5 and 3, and it's a six way tie, and we're only one game behind. And at the bottom. Three and five, all the way to well, Kansas. The Jayhawks off to a really poor start this season. Zero oh and five on the road for them. Two and six in conference. They've lost six straight. So outside of Kansas, top to bottom, within two games of each other. That's crazy. That is crazy. Uh, Virginia is one of the three and fives, and that's who we play next. Uh, but we are out of time, so we are going to be halting there at least for now. Four and four to start conference play. In conference B, the beat em up league is on. Maybe that'll start to set us up for more focus on the tournaments themselves now, down the road. Uh, but in terms of recruiting, <laughs> where is those SAT scores? Because I could be on my way to three recruits with the likely addition of Molinari. Uh, and I have no idea if we're going to get an SAT score for Molinari or not. I'm not sure how that works internationally. Uh, could be. They might require him to take the SAT as well. And he's a 2.5 GPA, so he may not qualify either. So uh, it's... Uh, Tough year recruiting. Tough year recruiting. We've got good things going on. Conference B, 14 and 6. Looks like we're on our way to the NCAA tournament. But I don't know. I mean, oh gosh. <laughs> Drama. Drama this season, huh? But hey, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.